Sometimes you're playing a video game when you see something. Stop right there! Who the hell are you? Department of Censorship! You cannot play this game in this country! What the? What are you doing? This is why today we'll be diving into 10 of the strangest moments of censorship that ever happened in video games. I'm taking this too! Hey! Brought to you by Privacy.com, a safer way to buy online using virtual payment cards. Not cool, man. Not cool. Use Privacy.com slash oddheader down below to save $5 off your first purchase. Dog's Life. Dog's Life is an especially unusual title that really wouldn't seem so based off of initial impressions, as it is intended for ages 3 plus in the UK and mainly has you completing a number of fun missions across the environment in a race to find your dog nap friend Daisy. The game takes a total turn for the worse, however, towards the end when Jake finds Daisy at a cat Daisy. food factory ready to be obliterated by the machinery run by the cruel Ella DeVille inspired Miss Peaches. The final level makes for an insane and unexpected tone shift for a kid's game, where the designers apparently thought it made sense to splatter blood all over everything, looking like something straight out of Silent Hill. And this wasn't even the censored part. The final scene has Jake very classily fart his way out of harm with Miss Peaches falling into the machinery herself and becoming a can of cat food, which was censored in the Japanese version who seemed to maybe appropriately think that this may have been too much for children. As the game fades the credits before Miss Peaches is wheeled back into the machine for a second time to meet her ultimate demise. Did I mention that this is a game intended for ages 3 plus? Half-Life the German Federal Review Board for Media Harmful to Young Persons is infamously stricter on video games than other media, and no game probably best exemplifies this than what they did with the original Half-Life. As the developers had to go as far as replacing all of the game's human soldiers with robots, characters could no longer bleed, boob animations were removed, and when you killed any NPC they would seriously just sit on the floor and shake their heads instead of dying. That's right, you couldn't even kill anyone in a first-person shooter. Talk about overcompensating. Most ironically, there's still blood, dead bodies, and people dying all over the place, so I'm not exactly sure what they were trying to protect us from. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is the second title in the Paper Mario series, which also has an unusually high number of changes in its international versions from the original Japanese release, including small changes in the environment, numerous animations, and even the genders of its characters. Strangely, in Rogue Port, the hub world and starting point of the game, the player can find a back alley of the central plaza behind Podley's Place, where some of the game's shadier characters can be found hiding at certain times in the game. Back here can also be found a dilapidated shed with nothing interesting to note. That is unless we look at the same scene in the Japanese version, where we can see it was originally a horrendous crime of a murdered character with blood splattered all over the walls and floor. In fact, on the US version, if you look closely on the walls, you can still see the blood. But without the proper context, you wouldn't have known it was there. The localizer said they only removed this out of fear that the ESRB would have seen it and gave them any rating besides an E for everyone, which could have jeopardized the marketing they had already paid for. I wouldn't have been surprised though if they removed this just to remove it, as I have no idea why something like this would be in the bright and sunny world of Mario. Grand Theft Auto by City Grand Theft Auto is a series that can basically be expected to be censored wherever it goes in some form or another, and in the Japanese version this was no exception, a version that Rockstar developed after the US release with Capcom, where they had to make a number of changes to appease the Japanese censors. The most interesting change occurs in the Versetti Estate aka Diaz's mansion, as the rooms populate with objects from the game's story the further you progress through the game. Some of these objects were obviously going to be deemed too racy by the Japanese censors, such as the photos and posters that you obtained from an adult film set. What's particularly odd about this change is how they chose to censor these objects, as for some reason someone over there at Rockstar or Capcom thought to replace all the photos with pictures of adorable kittens, which must have been wildly confusing to most Japanese players who would be unaware of what was going on, who would have likely thought the game's protagonist Tommy Versetti was slowly losing his mind. Though I guess considering the subject of these images, they're not exactly too far off from what the original pictures were. Mermaids of Atlantis, The Riddle of the Magic Bubble Mermaids of Atlantis, The Riddle of the Magic Bubble is a SNES title published by American Video Entertainment in 1991, which is about as innocent as a children's title gets, in a game that's very similar to Tetris where you have to match colored bubbles before they fill the entirety of the screen. But of course all of that changes the moment you look at the original Japanese counterpart, which was actually called Bubble Bath Babes. That's right. Mermaids of Atlantis that was sold as a children's game in America was actually an adult game from Japan, 
which was actually being distributed in the market without Nintendo's approval. So while children in the US were stuck playing boring old Mermaids of Atlantis, adults in Japan were playing the same exact game except now trying not to get distracted by the naked girl. Wait a second, where exactly are all these bubbles coming from? Final Fantasy VII while Final Fantasy VII has had its fair share of mysteries, no discovery was once more mysterious than the mystery panties that were found by data mining the game. And I'm not embellishing that, that's seriously what they're called. For years it was assumed the mystery panties were a cut object from the scene where Cloud has to cross-dress in order to rescue his friend Tifa from crime lord Don Corneo, who also owns the Honeybee Inn brothel where Tifa's supposedly been recently recruited. Hackers managed to find a large number of unused assets related to the Honeybee Inn that included an extra playable room that didn't appear in the game, which had characters in it who for years appeared to only say gibberish text. Ohm foreign members and data miners Shadem, Blitter, Barry, and Azza were able to figure out the text was only gibberish due to it being an unused font with a formatting issue. Fifteen years after the game's release, the team was able to finally reveal that this man in the jacket tells Cloud that he stole paintings from a clothesline behind Tifa's shop. Cloud takes some only to realize they have a young girl pattern on them. Okay? Making him question whose panties they really were. Thus the mystery panties. He then adds that they might come in handy for cross-dressing, and the man says our destinies are now intertwined. What? Why this was removed can actually be found in the Final Fantasy VII Ultimania Omega book. As Kashishiga Nujima remembered, fellow event writer Motomo Toriyama was in charge of writing for the Honeybee Inn and said at first what took place there was more extreme, and everyone was saying, that's going too far. A unique situation as mysterious panties weren't actually censored by a publisher or an overly relentless rating board, but by the game's own development team who were starting to grow worried about a certain writer. Which really says a lot, considering all the things they still let him put in the game. Conker's Bad Fur Day I'm no stranger to pointing out the hypocrisies of Nintendo's family-friendly reputation, and no game probably highlights this more than their 2001 release Conker's Bad Fur Day. Granted, the game is definitely one I remember fondly, but I still had to give myself a pretty hard face palm when I saw this one. The game is widely remembered for its countless movie parodies of late 90s culture, which leads to a few disturbing sequences parodying the movie Saving Private Ryan. In one scene, Conker walks into a lab where two teddy bears are smoking a cigarette who humorously break the fourth wall discussing the game that they're in. Really? That's incredible. I mean, what if you were to give this game to, say, yes, 20 yes. intelligent people? I mean, what would that do? Let's face it, what would it do? Really? That's interesting. What the f it's that bloody squirrel? Quick, it's the character! But it turns out this wasn't the original scene at all, as what you see here in the final game was originally intended as an outtake for the final credits. The original scene can be seen in a recovered beta of the game, and was originally a much more chilling scene of the bears performing a creepy experiment on a live teddy. Oh no. Who's completely missing from the final game. When Nintendo saw this, they basically said hell no, and forced them to swap out one of the bloopers from the credits in place of the actual scene. In this situation, I do actually agree with Nintendo. The way I see it, this is supposed to be a comedy game, and I can't figure out for the life of me how this in any way was actually supposed to be funny. Dragon Power Dragon Power just so happens to be the first Dragon Ball media that ever hit stateside in 1988. However, this isn't the more widely known Dragon Ball Z. It's Dragon Ball. The earlier, much more humorous and odd series about a monkey tail boy who befriends a teenage girl Bulma on an adventure to find mystical Dragon Balls. US viewers who caught the show on its Cartoon Network run may still be surprised to know that Dragon Ball was also originally way more perverted, as the censors directly cut whole plot points involving Bulma's underwear, which occurred in many instances such as using it as bait to capture a shapeshifter Oolong, which in the US version was changed to money. In another extremely questionable scene, Master Roshi requests to see Bulma's underwear in exchange for his Dragon Ball, a scene that actually did appear in the Japanese version of Dragon Power. The red flashing also suggests that Roshi is receiving a nosebleed, which culturally in Japan means he really likes that underwear. The US and French version, however, decided to censor this cutscene in a rather unusual way, as instead of underwear hovering around Master Roshi, there's now sandwiches. Right, and why not cut the whole scene? Strangely, on the US version, the red screen effect inferring Roshi's nosebleed is still there, meaning he now appears to have a very unhealthy obsession with sandwiches. Truth be told, I get it. I can always go for a good sandwich. No, this is censored as well. 
Will you get out of here? No. Crash Team Racing. Nitro Fueled. The Crash Bandicoot series is a series without much needed introduction. Although you may be unfamiliar with its number of wild censorships that happened throughout its 25 year run, Crash Bandicoot 2, for example, was noted for upping the series' Looney Tune inspired violence, which included this notorious death animation where he waddled away as nothing but a head and some shoes which was rendered to look completely flat in Japan because according to game director Jason Rubin, reminded them too much of a boy in Japan who was responsible for a series of beheadings at the time. But despite that whole hell of craziness, a more recent censorship in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled manages to raise even more of an eyebrow, as Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled brought back a newly styled version of Crash's girlfriend Tana from the original game as a purchasable character from the game's pit stop store. Microtransactions after finishing a single race in first place with Tana, the player unlocks a special darker toned version of Tana called Summertime Tana. Well, this is actually a censored version of the original skin that you would have unlocked, as the game was patched to remove the former skin's look, which was called this before being removed from the game. If for any reason this confuses you, you may be innocent enough to not know the racial connotations of watermelons in the US, as watermelons were introduced to the US via the slave trade and remain used to this day as a highly offensive way of perpetuating prejudices against black people. Looking at her outfit, you can see the darker version of Tana is wearing a watermelon styled outfit. So while you could argue it was in some way the product of somebody being tone deaf, the removal pretty much confirms that somebody over there had some sense that this in no way should stay in the game. Or probably should have shown up in any game, for that matter. Holy moly. Fantasy Star Online 2. Thanks to Juan2334 for submitting this on my Discord server. Fantasy Star Online 2 is an online action role-playing game published by Sega, where a space organization known as the Oracle searches the universe for planets to potentially colonize, all while suppressing the threat of aliens who exist to destroy the universe. In Episode 4, things get meta when Hitsugi, new recruit to the Oracle organization, is revealed to be the avatar of a human teen girl on Earth playing Fantasy Star Online 2. Hitsugi is sent back to Earth and her avatar manifests back home as a boy she names Al, and the Oracle organization observes from afar. Situations with Al and Hitsugi tend to get more than a little odd, so much so that much of the game was censored when it came overseas to America. Despite this, it was uncovered there were fully dubbed voiceovers that appeared to have been completely finished in English before they were cut from the game, which the YouTube channel Audio Visiphone Fantasy Star Online 2 matched to the original Japanese cutscenes here. Just Hitsugi and her friend Cory take a blindfold to Al and bring him into the girls' bathhouse after school, public bathhouses being a common aspect of Japanese culture that may not have been as well understood in America. Al for some reason keeps calling Hitsugi sis and keeps accidentally touching her boobs. Pretty sure that's not sibling behavior. The scenes proceed to lay on the crazy, as Hitsugi shames Cory for having large breasts, before Al is taken to the boys' bathhouse and some female teachers enter the girls' bathhouse. The scene ends with one teacher becoming more and more enraged that her breasts are the smallest, which then cuts to the boys' bathhouse where some male teachers talk to Al about Hitsugi and Cory only to get in a heated argument about whether small or large boobs are the best. Honestly, the Oracle's reactions who are watching all of this pretty much says it all. Which looks a lot like my face did when I found out that Sam's Club is still charging me for a membership despite not having slept in their store for years. Which is why I should have used Privacy.com. Privacy.com sets up virtual payment cards to mask your regular card information. In the event of ever getting a hack, Privacy.com keeps your information private and safe, letting you make as many virtual cards as you want. For example, you can tell Privacy.com that you only want to use this card for a certain store. Then you can set the spending limit on the card and you can even make it single use so that you don't get billed for a paid subscription ever again. Even has a browser extension for Chrome making it even easier to create new virtual cards every time you make a purchase. Upgrade to a pro plan for $10 a month and get 1% cash back on all of your purchases. Sign up today at privacy.com slash oddheader for $5 off your first purchase, which I personally use to pick up a game on the Steam store with their ongoing summer sale. Start making smarter, more secure purchases today and go to privacy.com slash oddheader and get $5 off your first purchase. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and if you know of any other strange censored moments in video games that you'd like to see covered, submit to oddheader.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout on Twitter or Reddit. Thank you again everyone for the continued support. I mentioned it last video, but as soon as this video is done, I'm hitting the road and moving across the country. So while things might be a little slow right now, it's going to pick up more than ever as soon as I'm settled in. 
Shout out to Anna Morris, RC with no H, Athanasius Decinos, Ash Photography, Baker, Bitwith27, Broups, Cadian98, Cody Brody Whitlow, Combat15 Bowl, Dan Duval, Dead Plastic, Decider12, Deer Mid Crowley, Ed Moffat, Eddie Toxpin, Flex, Fox M Cloud123, Gamer Play Hard, Jonathan A. All Ornalist, Mrs. Biscuits, Patrick Swayze, Price Primes Workshop, Riley S, Scarities, Select, Sneaking J, SNS, Sasuke Akira, Sirsa Fox, Taryn Stock, Towerizer, Tylorco7, Wade Murdoch, UU Kirby, and Zanceris for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.